104.5, the team, you're home for New York sports. Uh, the New York Knicks have been giving me agita like you wouldn't believe lately. So we got to make our call to ESPN New York's Ian Begley. Uh, Begs, first things first, man. The, the reports are out there that Phil met with Frank Vogel. Is that anything I can get excited about? You know, I, I think that you can because what I've been hearing the last couple of days uh, you know, with the interest in David Blatt, the interest in Frank Vogel, the idea that it's a foregone conclusion at this point that Kurt Rambis gets hired is inaccurate. That's what people are telling me. And, you know, a couple of weeks back, I kept saying if I was betting money on this thing, I would bet money on Kurt Rambis being the next head coach. At this point, after what I hear, heard for the last few days, I would not put my money on Rambis. I probably wouldn't bet at all because who the hell knows what Phil's going to do. <laughs> but I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Kurt will be the guy. Now, do you think he went to his uh, you know, trip to Wyoming and maybe uh, ate one of those natural plants that changes your perspective and then made a different decision? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. No, no one Phil's history of... Uh, being a little bit of a hippie. Yeah, I would not rule that out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I, I know he went away for a few days. I think that, that vacation was pre-planned. I mean, it was, the optics were, were bad, but I think that he, he did jump right back into talking to Vogel uh, a couple days after being away. And I assume he's in L.A. right now and, and maybe plotting his next move or trying to wrap this thing up. Uh, Ian Begley from ESPN New York with us on 104.5, the team breaking down the Knicks uh, head coaching search. Now, um, reports are out there that Blatt was a, was a legitimate contender. I, I've always said that there's no way Carmelo Anthony calls up LeBron James and goes, hey, what do you think of David Blatt? And LeBron says anything other than swear words. Yeah, I mean, if, I'm sure if Carmelo went to his buddy LeBron and, and asked about Blatt, the report would not be a good one. Um, speaking of reports, there was a report out there that said, Carmelo would have liked the idea of hiring David Blatt. I'm told that that report is is uh, stretching things a little bit because Carmelo hasn't expressed an opinion to anybody in his inner circle on David Blatt. So that's not to say that Carmelo would be opposed to a Blatt hire, but the idea that he would he would like it and support it, I don't think that's accurate because he's just flat out hadn't said that to anybody. So so just wanted to clarify on that. Pegs, if you had to rank them, not bad on them right now, would it be Vogel, Rambis, then Blatt? I'd probably go, yeah, I'd probably, it's hard to differentiate between Vogel and Rambis right now just because you're hearing so many different things from, from different people and even different things from the same person. So it's hard to get a read on where they stand, Vogel and Blatt. I would presume that Blatt's ahead of Vogel at this point, but. Again, I don't know. I just don't think. I don't think that Kurt Ramis will end up getting this job. Or I, I should say that I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that the job is Kurt. Well, based on Ramis's, uh, you know, NBA record, what, it's shocking he wouldn't be hired with all those wins <laughs> versus losses. <laughs> well, we know he's we, he's Phil's buddy. They're good friends, and Phil wants to run the triangle offense, and he's dedicated to that. So I think that's one of the reasons why. It, People thought, people around the league thought it was it was certainly going to be Rambis, but, but let's hold off on that because I think there's there's other factors at play here. Uh, Ian Bagley joins us, 104.5 The Team. Now, um, those those factors, it, it felt, I, you said the trip was pre, prearranged. It kind of felt like, a, like, like I kind of want to go hang out with my girlfriend and maybe head back to Los Angeles kind of thing. Is there is there any chance that Phil's not here this year? No, I think he's here this year. I think there's no question. I think the questions will arise uh, about his his long-term plans. If the Knicks struggle early on this year, you know, Phil has an out clause uh, next summer. And Luke Walton, a guy who has been referred to as, as his third son, is in L.A. already. So you do the math. Your bus is in hot water. Jeannie bus is in control over there. You know, it's only natural to think that Phil may end up in L.A. after this season, but I think he'll be here this year. Ian, are you jogging? Yeah, are you out for a run? <laughs> I'm, 
I'm yogging right now. <laughs> You're yogging. <laughs> okay, I got it. I like that. <laughs> Ian Begley joining us on <laughs> no, 104.5 The Team. Man. I'm out on the street in the city, so you're hearing a little ambient noise here. Oh, got it. He's a true man to of the people. give you a gritty New York feel for this radio. <laughs> I like it. I know. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, all right, so... <laughs> As we as we get ready for this season, obviously the talent the Knicks need is not on the roster yet. So let's not even like pretend we get the right coach. What can what can Knicks fans hope for as far as additions, whether free agency? I mean, obviously the draft. You're looking at day two kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're they're, they're hoping to get in through the second round. The best case scenario has them getting in late first. So that would be a tough order. They do have money to spend to buy a second round pick. Um, so they're hoping to get in the draft, and I think they want to try to upgrade the wing position. Um, I think that's what they're trying to get, a two-way player, looking to develop a kid into a two-way player, because that's one thing that's that's lacking on every NBA roster, but the Knicks as well. Uh, and then in free agency, I think you're looking at upgrades to the backcourt. Uh, I think that in a perfect world, they would nail Mike Conley and get him at a a team-friendly price. I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think other names that to look out for are guys like Nick Batum, who I predict will stay in Charlotte, or Jordan Clarkson, a restricted free agent with the Lakers. I think there's going to be interest there. Um, so, But it's just a crapshoot with free agency. I mean, the Knicks will have money to spend, as will every other team out there. So there's no inherent advantage there financially. So Jackson's going to have to do a good job selling this franchise to free agents this summer, and uh, and it's a big summer for Phil. So it's going to be interesting to me to see how the Zen Master does on the open market. Yeah, I mean, as a, uh, you know, based on the current condition of the Knicks, do you think there'll be significant pushback from free agents that he wants to bring into the uh, family fold? I just don't think it's going to be easy to land guys. You're going to have to overpay guys because, you're not bringing them into a winning situation. The idea that you can play in New York and there's a ton of different marketing opportunities, I don't think that's as big a factor today as it was five, ten years ago. Uh, guys want to win. Guys at the top of the market want to put themselves in a position to compete for an NBA title. I don't think the Knicks can sell that. What they can sell is, hey, two three years from now, we got a kid, Kristaps Porzingis, who looks like he's going to be one of the top players in the league come join us, help us build something around him, and maybe we can be a part of something special a couple of years down the line. So if you get a guy that that appeals to, hey, God bless, but it's, it's certainly not going to be an easy sell job this summer. Ian Begley joining us on LeVac and Wolf. So, Bags, as I, as I, as I listen, my expectations of the Knicks creep backwards and, and farther backwards. What are the chances they actually have a better record next year than they had this year? Well, they should. They should continue to take steps forward. I mean, I, I, I would be surprised or something would, would go very wrong if they win 31 games again. I mean, then then you start to talk about Phil being in trouble or, or leaving for L.A. and things not working out. I expect them to pick up uh, an impact player, a strong rotation player in free agency, and to continue to move this thing forward. Um, do they make the playoffs? I think that depends on the rest of the conference and health and and all of that, but I, I would be surprised if they took a step backwards. Ian Begley with us right here on 104.5 The Team. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen a brand new blues song from Jim Dolan. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, huh? It's been a while. He's got to work on another one for the Knicks. Uh, Bags, man, so it, it, not the greatest expectations going into this season. I, I can tell that uh, you've your pain is there a little bit, but not as bad as it was uh, two years ago when we had this conversation. Do you actually still watch the playoffs when they're going on, or do you just kind of just get ready for the, the, the free agency period? I definitely try to watch as much playoff basketball as I can. Uh, also, since the Knicks are not in season, I try to spend enough quality time or as much quality time with the wife as I can because I'm not around as much in season. So that's on the agenda. And my only pain is this coaching search is lasting forever. Yeah. I'm dying here. I want Phil to make a decision. So we can be done with it. Is it I, I, yeah, now there's more and more teams in the in the fray. So I'm I'm getting concerned that, you know, just like the free agents, the good names, the Vogels, like stuff like that are just gonna go, No, nah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this Orlando team that has young talent and cast space too. Yeah, Orlando's definitely an attractive job and an option for Frank Vogel. 
you know, David Blatt, Houston's an option for him. Um, so there are certainly jobs that, that seem better, certainly in the short term, than the Knicks. So Phil Jackson has, has that factor, too, to, to compete with. And you're going to have to make a move quickly because if these guys get other offers from teams like Orlando and Houston, uh, it's going to give them something to think about and it's going to give the Knicks competition for their service. Ian Bagley from ESPN New York. I, I don't know if Phil's going to be here much longer. I don't know who the coach is going to be, but I know when I want true Knicks information, this is the man I reach out to. Thank you, boys. I appreciate that. Hopefully I'm here through next summer. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, Ian. <laughs> I don't know if that's if I'm wishing good yeah. things on you when I say that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, man. I appreciate the time, boys. Thank you for having right, me. Thanks, have a thanks great for making day. time for us, man. You got it, guys. Take care.